uh, will be there but not kind of nodules and another thing is the Raynaud's phenomena I don't need to know about that okay guys we are talking about the rheumatoid arthritis in the global health concern and I'm your host Shuman Bhattacharji on behalf of Shamus Biology we are talking about in this video about the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis now as I always say the diagnosis is an integral part of any disease and probably the most important part for any disease because if you diagnose a disease carefully and properly proper medications should be used and the disease can be cured so in this case that for the diagnosis we need to rely on mechanical techniques we need to rely on certain uh, staining and chemical processes so what are they we can see the overview of the diagnosis which consists of several things like CBC which is the complete blood count of the body which is very interesting because you know uh, there are difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis uh, quite a bit difference so in, in this case there is a, in, in rheumatoid arthritis there is certain problems with uh, with uh, our our immune system so problems in our circulation we can see so total or complete blood count can be measured radiographs of involved joints can be seen as you can see here the x-rays and all these things we can look for CT or MRI scans of the soft tissue to understand what is going on there we can use a direct arthroscopy now arthroscopy is a technique that we can directly insert a probe and insert something some some uh, probe with the camera or sometimes uh, simply just take out some certain tissue from that for the tissue biopsy purpose fluid aspire or synovial whatever synovial fluid we can take synovial fluid from the joint we can we can check it uh, we can examine it using chemical tests to find out whether there is any problem or not synovial membrane biopsy can be done we can we can take some part of the synovial membrane to look whether the synovial membrane is working properly because if the synovial membrane works properly then you probably don't have this disease for any kind of arthritis synovial fluid and synovial membrane have some kind of problems and we can detect it by the synovial membrane biopsy and arthrocentosynthesis is another process we'll be talking about that later So if we talk about here, first of all, the ESR and CRP tests can be performed. Now these are the inflammatory markers. Now you know, once you are having uh, reported with those kind of symptoms like immense joint pain, stiffness of your joint, locking of your joint, very extremely difficult for move, movement of your joint and nodules start to form, people or are, are your physician obviously guess that you kind of having uh, arthritis. But what kind? To be sure, they usually use inflammatory markers and they are a common type of test very inexpensive type but very common type of test like ESR and CRP test ES ESR stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate erythrocyte means red blood cell now what this rate is suggesting now you can see here in this picture that from this top so, so these red red lines these are filled with red blood cells actually it's a, nothing but blood we circulate around and we place them to so that we allow the blood to settle we allow the red blood cells in the blood to settle down and leaves the relief portion the clear crystal clear solution like structure which is called as plasma which is a matrix of our blood which is not having any red blood cell so the the length of the plasma is a typical measure for the ESR now you can see the at the very beginning you can see the length is very less 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 but as we go on you can see the length is pretty high as you can see in this number five number eight now in these conditions five or eight these are the situations we are having very high ESR now if the ESR is more than you can see 0 to 15 millimeter for for male uh, men and 0 to 20 millimeter for women if you see this and uh, you can actually place them for one hour to look for whether the sedimentation rate in hour so if you find this ESR larger and longer in the time it is suggesting us there is certain problem in our body certain inflammation obviously going on inside our body because if there is kind of infection in our body there should be inflammation and if there is any kind of inflammation actually the erythrocyte sedimentation rate goes high right so larger or higher sedimentation rate is a chance or or it is telling us that there is certain kind of inflammatory problems going on in our body on the other hand CRP is the C reactive protein now the C reactive protein actually this is uh, the protein that is present uh, in our uh, it, this is actually also present in our plasma and uh, the C reactive protein e actually measures the concentration in the blood serum actually measure it uh, the presence of the amount of C reactive protein in our blood serum 
of a special type of protein which is produced by liver right and this protein is actually only produced during acute inflammation or any kind of infection otherwise so presence of crp protein in our blood in our plasma is a serious indication that we definitely have any kind of infection or any kind of inflammation so presence of crp and looking at the raise in the esr rate we can tell whether the person is having any kind of inflammation and inflammatory response going on inside their body or not second thing that we can use is the antibody tests as you can see here the antibody tests can be performed now in the antibody test uh, that we are going to use that the other blood tests along with along with the normal total blood count can be used and to check whether the presence of certain antibodies that are normally not present in human body so if you find some abnormal antibodies they are not present in the common human body in the healthy conditions if we find those kind of uh, antibodies we can say that yes there is kind of infection in the body so again presence of those antibodies is going to tell us that yes there is kind of uh, kind of problem going on people can use elisa to detect those antibodies in your blood and people can say that certain type in case of rheumatoid arthritis a typical types of antibody are found in the infected person's body not infected actually the diseased person's body now uh, those antibodies are called as rheumatoid factor so this test is called, termed as rheumatoid factor test because this test will 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 tell whether there is the rheumatoid factor present in the diseased person body or not if the rheumatoid factor or the antibody is found we can tell yes the disease is present so definitely they are having rheumatoid arthritis we can use arthrography and direct arthroscopy now arthrography you can see here arthrography is uh, is a radio it's a radio opaque type of test it's a radio opaque substance or air simply is injected into the joint you know air you can't inject it into the circulation but actually air or any kind of radio opaque substance is injected into the joint which outlines the soft tissue structure surrounding the joint so you can see by looking at the the outline of the surrounding tissue structure and compare it with the normal structure people or or the doctor technician can tell what exactly is going on inside on the other hand these are the complete structure of of the joint to understand the complete structure on the other hand the previous uh, diagnosis views we have, we have seen blood test and all those tests are indirect but these are the direct tests to understand what is going on for example the direct arthroscopy now the direct arthroscopy we just insert that that plate you can see here we can directly inject uh, this probe like structure in, inside and we just we just uh, can see uh, sometimes people can in, uh, insert that that laparoscopic tool using the laparoscopic tool people in, insert the miniature camera by th that they can use it they can see what is going on inside in the screen or sometimes people can can just take out certain tissue samples from the joints people can some, sometimes take out the synovial fluid using injection that is going to tell wh whether what is exactly going on in the joints so these are more in direct tests and the benefits of the direct arthroscopy it is a uh, minimally invasive and uh, the tissue damage amount will be less and it is having fewer complications compared to other things like like this uh, arthrography is slightly having kind of com complications there because air is inserted and uh, it is also having reduced pain and quicker recovery time so what people do actually they take out certain more amount of cartilage or muscles out of that joint to make the joint free more so that uh, people can move that joint pretty much easily so these are the type of things people can also use synovial or fluid aspire uh, process now in this case people, simply it's it's very easy process actually just in, insert an injection or the syringe and take out the synovial fluid from that but uh, it's a proper insertion required for prior to get the synovial fluid inside otherwise blood will come out so required expert technician to take the synovial fluid exactly out of the joint and once they take this out of the joint not only synovial fluid but sometimes people take out uh, the synovial membrane a small part of the synovial membrane using trotcher as you can see the structure here using the trotcher so then by biopsy by, by the biopsy of those synovial membrane and looking at those tissue sections and looking at uh, the chemical analysis of the synovial fluid we can tell whether any there is there any problem 
of our joint or not right so these are the different types of techniques people can use and I listed x-ray in the last because x-ray is nowadays a very common part it's very easy inexpensive method we can just simply look at it and it's obviously extremely helpful till date uh, for getting understand what is going on in the bone CT and MRI scans are also be used now in this case uh, as you can see here uh, you can see the joint pretty easily using the MRI scan and actually MRI is, is better than uh, X-ray in certain extent because in this case MRI or CT scan is going to tell you not only the structure of the bone but how the bone is organized with the soft tissue because here tissue is also being seen so you can see here the exactly in these two pictures you can find the difference in X-ray you can see only the bone structures but the tissues are not kind of seen because less dense but in this case of MRI or CT scan you can see every structure is a very detailed manner so that's why CT or MRI scans are much more preferred in these conditions rather than X-rays. Okay, so that's it.